Good evening YouTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. It's been a couple days. <laughs> Time just keeps rolling along. So I hope you're all doing well. This is a Friday night here in West Michigan. It is a Friday night. It is March the 22nd. It is 9.22 p.m here in Michigan and yeah I thought I'd make a video it's a Friday I suppose it's a Friday night reads and also I um, I mentioned in my video that yesterday Thursday my dear sweet wife flew back home after well she she visited our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and little Marika in Mercer Island which is right in the Seattle area in Washington. She was there for a week and then she, her plane, <laughs> they had, you know, that big problem they had in Southwest where her flight was canceled to Denver when she was going to visit our daughter Bethany and her family, Andy, her husband, uh, Louisa, Margaret, and Jack. So, but she got a flight Saturday. So she left Mercer Island last Saturday and she spent I think, five days with our daughter there in Denver. And then she flew out of Denver on flat yesterday and flew into Grand Rapids. Her plane was 40 minutes late. But we, uh, I picked her up. But before I picked my wife up in Grand Rapids, I visit bookstores as I said I was gonna I, when I go to Grand Rapids I always visit Argos used books been going there for 40 years well when I first started going I was in in Bible College that's where I met Carol in Bible College there in Grand Rapids Reformed Bible College and it was just down the road on Robinson Road there in Grand Rapids and I you could I could walk there I I was gonna bring up I have one of the books I bought there at 40 years ago at the Argos used books. The person who owns it now is not the person that did 40 years ago. I don't know how long this guy has owned Argos books. But every time I go to Grand Rapids, I always go there. So I, I think there's only one used bookstore in Grand Rapids. And it's been there. It's like, I suppose it's kind of like... Um, if you're a book lover, that's where you go. But one thing about Argos I don't like, the books are really expensive. Because I'm so used to paying thrift store prices for books, used books. When you go to the Argos, you spend three or four times as much as you would on a used book at a thrift store. You spend a lot more money. So when I go there, I'm kind of, I'm very, I'm just, I have to go in there and get out of there before I spend a lot of money. So I went there to Argos. When I first came into Grand Rapids, I, the weather was perfect. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was. I was kind of freaked out driving to Grand Rapids. But the Lord gave me grace. And once I get into Grand Rapids, I feel fine because we lit when I, many years ago, or well, over the years, we've, I know Grand Rapids as much as I know Holland. So anyway, when I got to Grand Rapids and I went to Argos, I looked for a book by Bonnie J. Campbell. And I showed you this, her, her short story collection, American Savage. And I wanted to find her novel, uh, Once Upon a River. And Argos had it. It was twelve ninety five. That's I probably gotten cheaper if I went to a, a used book sale. Maybe it would come into the book nook. But I wanted to read it. See, it says here, author of the National Book Award finalist, American Savage. So I wanted to read this. Uh, I was watching a video of her on YouTube reading from this. She also read from American Savage. So I found Once Upon a River. So I found that, and I was looking for... Uh, I forgot to bring it. I knew I was going to... No, I didn't. I was looking for novels by Carolyn Shute. 
uh, and there was nothing there at Argos used bookstore uh, by her. So, but I did buy two books <laughs> at Argos, and one thing I bought was the letters of this of Wallace Stevens, edited, selected, and edited by Holly Stevens, and New Forward by Richard Howard. Wallace Stevens is one of my favorite poets, and so I bought this. It cost me twenty-two dollars for this thing. I don't know how much it would cost brand new. I haven't looked, but it's probably a twenty-five dollar. Well, I don't know. I should look it up on Amazon how much it would cost. Anyway, I bought letters of Wallace Stevens last year. I bought. And I haven't read The Life of Wallace Stevens, The Whole Harmonium, The Life of Wallace Stevens by Paul Moranian. And I also have his books of poetry, The Collected Poems of Wallace Stevens, and Wallace Stevens, The Palm of the End of the Mind, Selected Poems. So I wanted to, if I ever get around to reading this biography in the life of the poet Wallace Stevens, I have his letters also. So I, I also got Wallace Stevens' Opus Postumus, Poems, Plays, and Prose by uh, Wallace Stevens. So I got this for my Wallace Stevens collection. And I also bought something I saw and I didn't realize I had already. And what it was, was a biography on Joseph Conrad, a chronicle. Now... I can't pronounce the Polish name of this person who wrote this biography. He's Polish too. Joseph Conrad was a Polish. And I bought it. It cost me $6. And I thought I didn't have it. But when I got home and I cataloged it in library thing, I had... In it. This is an early edition of... This biography by Nodander, no, Nadjander, uh, Joseph Conrad, a chronicle. Well, this is an earlier one. And then later on, he wrote a revised one where he expanded it. And I had that in our, my library. I bought this from the book nook. Oh, no, it was a library reject. They took it out of circulation. Joseph Conrad, a life. This thing goes... If I was to buy this used on Amazon, it's $45. But uh, I could, I'm really into Joseph Conrad. Now, i got to be honest. I haven't read Joseph Conrad, Joseph Conrad since high school. It seems the books that really I read when I was in high school in my early 20s, early college days, have stuck with me and... Those are the ones I first started collecting when I started collecting used books about 10, 12 years ago. I started collecting the things that I read when I was younger for secular writers. like And Conrad, I remember reading when I was in high school and my early 20s. And so I started collecting his writings, biographies, literary studies. So now I got two of them. <laughs> So after Argos, I went there really fast. The guy said, you didn't stay around too long. And I said to myself, because your prices are outrageous. <laughs> I, I, could, I could drop down $100 on just six books. Uh, if I had $100 and I went to thrift stores and used book sales, I could buy 60, 70 books <laughs> easily. So then I went to... East Town Public Library, which they sell used books at their library. But when I went inside the library there in East Grand Rapids Library, they were having, they just had laid down new carpet and it was all blocked off and nobody could go into that area. So I couldn't look at the used books, so I left. So then I went to Baker Book, Baker Christian Bookstore. Baker Books is a, ver I've been going there for 40 years. Well, they used to be at a different location years ago and then they built this huge store in Grand Rapids that it's it's it has their new books and it has a large 
store of used Christian books and they sell, you know, Christian knickknacks and they sell Bibles and they sell Christian CDs, Christian records and they sell all kinds of stuff, but they sell, they have a wide selection of good Christian literature, academic literature, you know, devotional books, Bibles, books on spiritual warfare, books, Catholic books, Greek Orthodox theology, commentaries. They also sell their books that they get damaged, they get nicked, or they get something wrong with them, and they sell them 50% off. So you can find new Baker Bookhouse books really cheap, especially if they're new. Well, I looked around, and I looked around, and I looked around, and I didn't see anything new that I wanted, and I didn't see any damaged books that I wanted. So I looked at the use, I went to the used part of this huge, giant bookstore, the used books. And I was talking to one of the guys who, one of the guys who works there in the used books part of the bookstore. And he mentioned that they had just bought a minister's library and that they were just, they were pricing them. So I looked through it and it was a good library. It was, it was okay. And they had one book and this is the book I bought it, because it deals with the things I'm reading right now in my own Christian reading on union with Christ, participation in Christ. And that's what it is. It's being in Christ a Biblical and Systematic Investigation in a Reformed Perspective by Hans Berger. Hans Berger, this is with his PhD dissertation. He is an he is in, in the Netherlands in the Netherlands Reformed Church in the Netherlands. And uh, I looked at it. It looked really substantial. It cost me thirty dollars for this thing. <laughs> thirty dollars. But I thought, well. As I, you know, before I bought it, I, I was at Baker for almost a year, an hour and a half, because I, I had to pick up Carol at 3.45, and I, my, my plan was to go to Baker's, you know, I took my diary, I was writing in my paper diary, I took books, I was going to get coffee there and get lunch there, and so before I bought this book, Being in Christ, I read parts of it, and I thought, Oh, this is, it's worth $30. And so I bought it. And um, so that's what I bought in Grand Rapids. I've been, this is my Friday reads. Today I volunteered at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook. This is what I've been reading since yesterday and today. I'll probably read it Friday, no, Saturday and Sunday for my devotions in the morning. Uh, Being in Christ. A Biblical and Systematic Investigation in a Reformed Perspective on Union with Christ or Participation in Christ. So, that's what I got. I also, before I went to Grand Rapids yesterday, it was a bit, it was foggy in the morning and, and yesterday and I didn't want to drive, I can't drive in fog. So I went to a local thrift store and I bought two used books. Uh, I bought uh, as a thousands cheer, uh, as thousands cheer, a life of Irving, Irving, Irving Berlin, the very famous American uh, lyricist, or uh, I think that's what we call him. Um, a full biography of the king of American songwriters, the man of whom rival composer. Jerome Kern once said, Irving Berlin has no place in American music. He is American music. Berlin's life spanned 101 years. That's how old he lived. He lived to be 101. And his career extended the heyday of vaudeville, vaudeville, was it vaudeville? vaudeville, to the homogeny of rock. He wrote both lyrics and music for some 1,500 songs of which an in parallel 25 reached the number one spot on the weekly popular music charts. So it goes on and on. So everybody in American music knows about Irving Berlin. So I got that. The guy who wrote this is, his name is Lawrence, 
Lawrence Bergrin. I read last year his biography on Casanova, The World Seductive Genius by Lawrence Ber Bergrin. So he, I have another, I have his biography on uh, Al Capone. He wrote to this Lawrence Bergrin. He also wrote on Columbus and the Four Voyages. He's written a lot, a lot of, a lot of biographies. I have another book of his on one of the Portuguese explorers who circled the globe back there in the 15th or 16th century. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name now. Anyway, and then I picked up at that thrift store before I went to Grand Rapids, A World at Arms, A Global History of World War, World War II by Gerard, Gerard L. Winberg. I got these. So those are the used books I got yesterday. Thrift stores, book sales, used bookstores. As far as what I've been reading, besides being in Christ, I've been reading The Merry Men by Marilyn Shute and reading that memoirs I told you about by uh, Diana Adhill, The Life Class, Selected Memoirs of Diana Adhill. And I've been reading, it's probably a reread for me, is Nicotine, a novel by Neil Zink. I told you that she has a new novel coming out, I think late spring or early summer. So I've been rereading re this. I'm halfway through it. So that's what's going on in my book world uh, this week. Uh, like I said, I w it was a very difficult two weeks, my wife being gone. I didn't really read as much as I usually do. I spent a lot of time just <laughs> holding tight to the, to the, just to keep myself together. I have, I also been reading uh, my Christian books, but not as much in the mornings. I've been writing in my diary. As far as my diary today, I ended on page 266 for the year 2019. Tomorrow is March the 23rd, 2019. My heading for my online blog tomorrow and Crooked Fingers will be Salvation is not a matter of moral reformation, but of new creation. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's a verse that the Apostle Paul says in, in Galatians. He says, uh, he says there in chapter 6 of, Gal of, of Galatians, see with, with, see with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For in Christ neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. So that's what's, when a person, by saving faith, is it united to Christ, participates in Christ, in the life of God, he becomes a new creation. And uh, so that verse came to my mind. There's another verse that came to my mind, if I can find it. I haven't looked at it in a while. But... Um, I can't, I don't know if I can find it. I haven't looked at it in a long time. But yeah. I can't find it. I don't know if I can look at it. I haven't looked at it in a long time. So yeah. So Carol's back. She had to go back to work tonight. She's works Friday, 
Saturday and Sunday. And then she is off for eight days. And yeah, so it's good to have her back home. Try to get back to normal. Try to get back to to day-to-day uh, -to -day life. I mean, it was kind of sunny today. It was kind of spring-like today, which was kind of nice. And uh, so that's about it here in my book world. I can't find those verses in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians about being a new creation in Christ. I haven't looked at them in a long time. So yeah, tomorrow is Saturday. I'll look at these books. I'll read. I'll write in my diary. Watch the birds. Carol will sleep. Life will just keep going by. So I hope you're all doing well, that you had a good reading week, that you have a good reading weekend. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. Hope you're all doing well. And yeah, until next time. Bye.